All right, we are out here on a new cooling coal. This is a Bryant. Yeah, you probably cannot read that, but it is a 661CJ030-E from 2005. And it is not blowing cold. I just hooked up the gauges and I only have 72 PSI standard pressure. This is an R22 system. So just by looking at that, you can tell that it is very, very low. So I've already looked around, so we'll, uh, we'll pop up in the attic and uh, see what I found. Hop up in the attic. There's the air handler. And I just popped the doors off and uh, I'm gonna grab my flashlight. Just popped the doors off and took a look around to see if I saw any obvious signs since they mentioned it had been cooling last week and now it's not doing anything. So I assume that something ended up blowing out. So I was taking a look in here. Not sure how well you can see down there. There's a little bit of water there, but that's a big oil stain in the drain pan. It goes all the way back over there. Some of there's some of that's water in there, but a lot of it is just the dark spot is oil. And I could hear, which maybe you can hear it too, the hissing. So I was feeling around and uh I found it. Now I pulled this little tube out. It was behind this 3 8 pipe. And try to get so you can see. Come on. My camera will cooperate. Right there on that 3 8 pipe. Right there. see a little better there it's been rubbing and it's got the tiniest little pinhole in it and that blew out majority of our refrigerant so I am going to fix that the unfortunate part is it's such an easy repair but it lost about eight or nine pounds of 22 which is not cheap these days so the refrigerant will probably end up costing quite a bit more than the actual repair itself. Now there's a couple different ways to fix a leak like this that that I've seen. Um, one is to take a small hand file um, because tubing cutters will will pinch the uh, pinch the tube down so it seals it off. But you take a small hand file and I apologize I'm trying to do all this with one hand and hold a flashlight but you would file on either side of the damaged section of pipe and file it pretty much through until you can uh, you can snap that pipe and then they would take a piece of say quarter inch copper and sleeve over that uh, over that gap like a coupling um, that works if you're comfortable with your brazing skills and uh, you're pretty good with the heat, you can very gently just braze over that little that little section there. You just want to watch your heat because if you get it really hot, one, you'll either melt the pipe, or two, you can start pulling braze into that small that small tube. So just have to be really careful. Take some practice. Um, that's what I'm going to do because there's no large hole or anything right there. Um, so I'm just going to just gently braze over that little bit of pipe right there and uh, seal that off. If anybody was wondering, yes, there was dry nitrogen pumped through the system while I was doing this. Just very, very little. Um, just so it doesn't blow the, uh, the braze out of that 
that tiny little pinhole, but my camera's having a hard time focusing, but I fixed it. Didn't even melt the insulation right there, so we'll go ahead and uh, pressure test this bad boy. And we're putting the filter dryer in somewhere in that general area. And um, yeah, we'll be on a vacuum, so uh, like I said, it's pretty easy fix. I'd much rather attempt that than just flat out just tell them they need a new coil. It's a 2005. Um, I'm pretty confident I can fix little rubs like that. So, but there we go, and uh, I'll keep you updated on the repair. Filter dryer's in place. Typically, I put it about 12 inches or so outside of the air handler, but there's not uh, not a whole lot of room here, so. I wanted to keep a little bit of space for getting the getting the service doors off and getting access to the coil, things like that. So put it up here a little farther out of the way and uh, holding pressure. So as long as that stays good, we'll be evacuating and uh, charging this bad boy back up. She's back up and running now. Weighed in most of the refrigerant get her started and film everything else because uh, this tropical storm whatever is uh, making it messy out here so it keeps raining on and off periodically so but uh, those are our numbers so far looking pretty low but hasn't even been running for five minutes yet so we'll uh, let her keep running and I'll show you what the numbers are once we're finished Final numbers, calling for 22.8 target superheat. We got about 22, it keeps going up and down. 22.8, 23, and uh, my sub is a little high, but it's also raining right now. So we got a lot of moisture that's coming against this side of the coil and helping it uh, condense that refrigerant. So that may be why my sub is a little higher than normal. But I'm not too worried about it. My numbers are pretty good. Um, within a half a degree of my target superheat, good temps inside. So I'm going to pack it up and get out of this uh, tropical storm mess and get on to the next one. Just a quick FYI this is not what electrical tape is used for. No, pretty sure that's, that's not what it's used for. Just thought I'd point that out. Anybody that was wondering.